Good evening and welcome Marshall Reddick investors to this evening's presentation on asset protection and insurance for rental properties. Um, for those of you who are new to Marshall Reddick, a little bit about us. Uh, we've been around since 1979, uh, quite a while. Uh, more important than that, what sets us apart? We are a full service brokerage. So what does that mean? We have three separate divisions. Literally, we are a one-stop shop with something for everyone. So what does that look like? Let's look at our first division. We do traditional real estate brokerage, which means we help you buy and sell your primary home, as well as helping our investors buy and sell investment properties. The second division uh, is property management. Um, a lot of our clients that are invest buying investment properties don't want to take on the role as landlord. We take care of everything for you, from the leasing, the maintenance, renovations, rent collections, everything that goes along with being a landlord, our team takes care of. The third division is our private lending division. And with that, we have two clients. We have borrowers and we have lenders. And you could be either. Uh, you could borrow from us privately for non-owner occupied loans, such as fix and flip, uh, spec building, uh, buying investment property with self-directed IRAs, or you can also be the bank. You can collect mortgage payments instead of rent checks. So there's a lot of opportunity there with Marshall Reddick. We are a one-stop shop. Let me talk a little bit about myself. I'm a licensed real estate agent with 20 plus years of experience and background in residential real estate. Uh, I assist buyers and sellers with their primary residences as well as investment property. I also spent seven years in real estate financing with uh, Wells Fargo. Uh, I'm also a California native who's bought and sold dozens of properties uh, encompassing three states. I've done fix and flip, fix and flip. Uh, I've been recently involved in private lending. So real estate is truly my passion and I love doing what I do. So you ask, where do I begin as an investor? Well, step one is education. That's what you're here with us tonight for, to learn a little bit about your asset protection. Um, the old saying goes, the more you learn, the more you earn. So you're definitely in the right place. Uh, Marshall Reddick is very, very um, pro-education. Uh, second thing you want to want to do is schedule a complimentary consultation with an advisor like myself. We can walk you through the process and do some uh, information gathering and set up a plan for you. Uh, we work with you to plan a tailored and specific plan for all your investment needs. And we all work as a team, so we have everybody on board, uh, all the people you need. So a consultation. What is a consultation going to look like with an advisor? Uh, we start with your goal setting, the very basic. Where are you at this moment in life? And what are you looking for? What do you want to do? What has set you over to Marshall Reddick? And, and what do you want us to help you with? Then we evaluate your options. Are you going to get there? Are you going to use conventional financing, private lending, cash? Are you going to open a self-directed IRA? Then we look at your time frame. Are you planning on buying one property every year for five years? Are you going to buy one property every two years for 10 years? One property is not going to make you rich, but long-term investing in real estate will. Then we look to set your criteria. Uh, what property class are you looking to invest in? We have A through D class properties. Do you want single family? Do you want to buy duplexes? Are you multifamily? What is it? it in your criteria that we can assist you with. Then we look at identifying markets. At Marshall Reddick, we have 16 markets that we advise our clients on. We have the research, the market data packets, and we know that these are markets that are very landlord friendly and that are going to build a return and build your investment portfolio. We talk you through the pros and cons of each market and help you identify which one you wanna target. Once we've targeted a market, we introduce you to all the key players. We have boots on the ground area agents who are expert in that area. Um, we have our in-house lending team. We have 1031 accommodators. We have tax people, property management, uh, insurance, which is what we're going to talk about tonight. We have renovation, real estate attorneys, 
we have the entire team already put together just waiting to help you. So our markets, if you look at the markets, we have 16 major met metropolitan markets across eight states. On one of the things that have, they're all in common is that they're all landlord friendly. Of course, you see California on there. We know that's not landlord friendly, but it is our home state. So we do love it. And we do, um, we do quite a bit of uh, business in California. But as far as our investments go, we prefer uh, our clients move out of California just for that landlord friendly uh, peace of mind. So what markets do we choose and why? It's not because of it's a great place to vacation. It's not because it's where you grew up. Uh, it's not where you visited as a child. We, our criteria is based on research and we look for things, the most important things we look for are, of course, number one, jobs, jobs and more jobs. We need a state that is landlord friendly, of course. Uh, we look for a low cost of living for the tenants. We look for high rent versus purchase price. We look for some places that have historically low vacancy rates. Then we also look for economic diversity. We don't want a place that is a one horse town. Example of that would be Detroit, which is completely dependent on the auto industry. We also look for places with strong education that have universities near and around. And I think the number one is last on our list, but I think it's probably the, uh, the most important is reliable property management. You need somebody there boots on the ground that can take care of your investment on a day-to-day -day basis. The other thing I'd like to suggest before I introduce our guest speaker tonight is our Reddick Property Rating eBook. Um, this is something that you can click on our website and download. It's, uh, it's an eBook, so you can read it straight from your computer. Um, this will take you step-by-step step on how we determine markets that we advise our clients to invest in and the process we go through to find these markets. It's a great learning tool and you will, you'll learn a lot from it and it'll, it'll be another tool in your tool belt. It's always a great start. I always recommend it to everybody to start with this ebook. Um, once again, you can just download it from our website. You can give me a call. I can send it to you in an email, however you're comfortable getting it. I definitely highly, highly recommend it. And I'm going to now, I'm going to introduce somebody that I have a great deal of respect for. Stan Dreckman has been with uh, a partner with Marshall Reddick uh, since the beginning, since 1979. Um, he is my go-to for anything and everything pertaining to insurance, uh, to my investment properties, asset protection. Um, refer all of my clients to him. He does a fabulous job. Everybody gives him a five-star complete um, review of just a great work, great work and um, just a wealth of knowledge. So at this point, I would like to uh, turn the, the microphone over to Stan and have him talk a little bit about asset protection for uh, your investment properties. Oops, there we go. You back that up a little bit, I got a lot of control. There we go. Okay. Can you, I what an introduction. Thank you. And I let off with a good fumble, but we'll get we'll pick up this game and get it moving. So I'm Stan Dreckman and met a lot of you, I believe they're on on the line today. And um we do insurance for real estate. We do a lot of different kinds of, of, of insurance, but particularly in the real estate area, we do a very good job. Uh, we've been doing it uh over 45 years I have been. Michael, who works with me, many of you have spoken with Michael. He was a property manager for 20 years before we stole him away from that industry. So between the two of us uh, and our back, back office staff, we are an experienced shop when it comes to insurance and real estate. I have owned real estate uh, myself, uh, investment properties. I, f I know what you all go through when you get started. I know what you guys go through when you're cruising. So um, I, we understand uh, real estate and insurance very, very, very well. What we have, what, 
the purpose of insurance basically is this, and this is really the something I want you to fully comprehend and understand and appreciate. It's to keep you safe from a financial loss due to accidental or predictable events. Typically, you would say, well, why predictable? Well, you can, you can count on during the year there's going to be a hurricane somewhere in the south. You can count on during the year there's going to be heavy snowstorms. Maybe not what happened in Texas this year. That's a once in a lifetime, they said, but uh, uh, hailstorms, things like that. These are things that we know are going to happen. Uh, in California, we buy earthquake insurance because we know it's going to happen at some point. So that's that's a predictable event. Maybe not when it's going to happen, but we know that one day it will. And then the idea of the insurance is to help secure and rebuild your property after these catastrophic events. Landlord insurance comes in a basic structure. The structure is such that um, it all kind of looks the same particularly when you're buying it, it looks very much the same. And it isn't, and we're gonna show you that. But the basic landlord policy kind of starts with this, this structure right here you're looking at. We cover structures, we cover the, the buildings, uh, the garages, the home, if it's a four unit, the four units, whatever it might be, our intent is protect that piece of property. You'll see that oftentimes uh, called coverage A. Contents, if you buy that, uh, is what we call, it's a coverage C, and that's that typically is your rent-ready content. You might have things like a removable stove and oven, a range and oven type of a situation. You might have a removable uh, dishwasher. You might uh, have freestanding refrigerator, washer, dryer for your tenants sometimes. Th those are all items that we put down under the contents, so we add a little coverage there. Why do you buy rental property? To collect rents and to create um, a very good um, stream of income for yourself. Rental income is something that stops if there's a if there's damage to the property. We also will protect your loss of rental income. And it's set up a lot of way. The typical structure is 10% as an additional amount of insurance of what the structure would be. So if the structure is $100,000, you'd have $10,000 of rental income. Then you have liability protection, liability if you are sued for injuries resulting from your property. That's basically uh, how the policy is going to be set up with most companies. And what kinds of claims are covered? There's a whole lot of, of, of kinds of claims that, that will pop up and grab you, but these claims I'm mentioning, just these four, are your most common claims for property. Fire, obviously. You got fires going in North Dakota of all places right at the moment. Um, but we know what fires are like down here, and they get them in the south occasionally as well. Wind and hail, that's your that's your middle America claim. Vandalism is an anywhere claim, and water damage is pretty much an anywhere claim. And water damage is specific. It's not any kind of water. It's water from broken pipes and appliances, and that is what that is for. Those examples would be uh, your S-joints under S pipes rather under the sink. The um, if you happen to have a water heater inside the home and it blows up and gets everything all messed up, that's covered. Uh, but there are certain things that are not covered. There is a ton more of coverage, but I want you to kind of focus on those four because those are really where the coverage comes into play. That's what you're going to run into if you have a claim. Now, I mentioned not all water is covered. Flood, as defined as surface waters coming in from the outside into your property is not covered. And in California, we are a little concerned about earthquake as well. Additional policies are needed for that. Now, when you set up these policies, they're set up on a replacement cost basis, but you really need to add a little bit more than that. We're gonna get a little further into this, but I wanted to, to show this to you right now so you could see it. This is where, at this point, this is where the insurance policy and what I showed you as a basic outline where the companies tend to separate is in this section of coverage. Most companies will set up their policies on a replacement cost basis. Now, you might buy a property uh, that's really super old, four unit, costs $600,000 to replace it, and you're paying $200,000 for it. If you do something like that, and I'm only, uh, from an insurance standpoint, we recommend only really experienced investors do that. Um, 
you're going to probably have to write that insurance on what's called an extra cash value basis, which means they're going to depreciate a little bit of claim and they're not going to give you the full replacement cost. But our Safeco and Travelers, the companies we focus on the most inside our program, we'll, we only write replacement costs on those policies. So that's your first leg of, of replacement costs and where companies start separating. A lot of them will have this, but from here on we change. Our companies also add an extra coverage. We call it the extended replacement cost. You'll see it named different things. A lot of companies have adopted this in the last few years, but um, what, the, what the extended coverage does for you, extended replacement cost coverage, is it actually will pay more than the policy limit. And we're going to give you an example of that a little later. But uh, uh, simply stated, say if you had a $200,000 policy, and your property was totaled. So you got say you got knocked over by a tornado. You have a property in, in, in Missouri and it gets blown away. And you want to rebuild. You actually have on a two hundred thousand dollar policy up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of coverage for uh that, that you'll need and will be made available to you to replace the property the way that it was. But then there's the last leg. When I said the way that it was, here's the last leg of replacement costs, which is building ordinance, or what you might just say building code changes. And if you have a property that's over seven years, for sure there have been significant building code changes. There could be a building code change during the time when the property you're buying now is being built. They happen all the time. In fact, I would guarantee that probably two years from now, there'll be some changes in how they operate, uh, excuse me, and, and how, how they build things in Texas because of that experience they had with that freeze. That's typically the kind of event that will change things. And our policy will pick up the costs of those changes. Those are betterments. Typically, an insurance policy will not better your, better your situation. It'll put you back to make you what they call a uh, whole. But in, in, in that way, with this extended uh, replacement cost and the building ordinance coverage, we're going to allow you to put the house back together again. And in 99.9% .9 of the cases, have plenty of money to do it. The second half of the of the insurance policy, we kind of briefly briefly gleaned over the um, um, property section. We um, the second half of an insurance policy for a landlord is liability. Liability is something happens to somebody else and they say your fault. It, it's your it, it's your fault. These are some great examples. Neighbor slips on an overflow from broken water lines. That happens. We had a situation where someone slipped on a uh, a broken um, uh, line that was out, out in, the, in the front lawn area. I was there walking to pick up the paper at dusk in the morning. The person flew up in the air, uh, fell down, land on her shoulder. She was a concert violinist, by the way. So she was out of business for a while. Good thing we had a half a million dollars of coverage. Water sprinklers running all night flood the neighbor's home below you. Sometimes homes are terraced and you can have a, ho a home uh, above you and below you. And that home just might get inundated down below you if your sprinklers are set. If you have a sprinkler system, they get stuck. And the neighbor wakes up in the morning and they're standing in two inches of water in their kitchen. They're going to come talk to you about that. And then a big part of our liability coverage is if you are falsely accused of wrongfully evicting a tenant. Uh, this is something that can happen a lot. And not all policies will give that to you. We provide that coverage as well, which we think is mandatory for a landlord insurance policy. So here's an example of, oh, it moved. I love PowerPoint. Here's an example of, of how the insurance will work on a typical landlord insurance policy. And these are non-business forms. These are what we call personal insurance forms. This, this is a real duplex built in 2021, 355,000 to replace it. And we have $12,000 of personal property that's six aside for the rent ready contents. Rental income is set at 35,000. You see that right there. You see the, the, the switch, it's 10% of that value. And that's just about the right amount of money. The total rent might be 37, so you buy an extra $2,000. That's pretty close. Liability protection, a lot of, lot of people want to just put $300,000 on there. We even run across two or three times a year other agents putting on only $100,000 of coverage. Why would they do that? Because they want to get your business and they're going to slice it and dice it any way they can. We don't recommend that. We'll show you how it should be done in a minute. And on a home of this size, you would probably have a $2,500 deductible. Then you notice down below wind and hail. 
wind and hail coverage, these are your tornadoes, tropical storms coming in, hurricanes coming in, or hailstorms coming in, damaging your property, they use a percentage typically of the dwelling value. You notice that's 1% of the dwelling value. And that's your typical form that you might run across from most insurance companies. But this is really what your policy should look like. This, these are things that you need to see. Uh, this is where you have the replacement cost on your dwelling. So we have a replacement cost form plus. We mentioned we would add 125% to the total value of the coverage to make it available to replace the property. In this example, there's another $88,000 of coverage available to you. So we can put that property back together again. And then we have the loss of rental income again, $35,000. You notice though that we under a liability protection, we have $500,000 of coverage. We do that because you typically will only pay two to seven dollars to increase it from 300,000 to a half a million. So why would not you do that? That's a hamburger and, and, a, and a cup of coffee any place. So that's something that you want to do. Ordinance of law is in there. These are your building code changes. So again, we have up to $35,000 of coverage available to actually better your property in the event of, of a claim and there should there be a, a building code we're going to take care of it and there's another reason why you want that coverage i didn't mention this before very important if you have a significant loss involving exterior like significant roof damage or something like that or a kitchen fire there's this person called the building inspector in the in the in the safety and municipal code divisions building departments of each city who wants to get wind of the fact that you're your property is being fixed, they're going to come by and they're going to tag it and make you come to code if they think that it's a requirement. So this is something that's important to have. Otherwise, you have to pay for this out of your own pocket. Whoops. I'm going to back up a little bit. I went too far. I think. I can't see my control. There we go. Now I can see it. I'm sorry, people. I jumped way ahead. That was an accident. Okay. So you've seen that property. So here is the example of a claim. This, this isn't a real claim, but this is what can happen in your typical insurance uh, policies. Your typical, we have, say we have a total loss scenario based on that policy we just looked at. We have $355,000 of coverage. Uh, the actual cost to replace this house is $386,000 based upon the estimate from the general contractor is going to build it. We have a policy, again, it's set at $355,000. Most landlord policy programs are going to pay the $355,000 and they're going to stop there because you've maxed out your limit. Again, your, total, your typical company is going to pay $355,000, but your loss is $386,000. Our Safeco and our Travelers policies pay up to 125% of the policy limit. So we easily absorb that extra, in this case, um, it's like $31,000 of, of additional cost that's going to cost you to put this house back together again. That's a real value. You can't, you know, that's just picking up an extra, a whole lot of extra money. Now, what we give us, insurance companies are famous. They give you a tremendous amount. You look at their insurance agreements and you're covered for everything, except then they start telling you what you're not covered for. You need to know what you're not covered for as well. Earthquakes and land movement of any kind. We mentioned flood before and surface water. Surface water could be something as simple as, I give an example of, of you, you, you flooded out the neighbor down below you, you could, your sprinklers could be, could have, uh, excuse me, the uh, grass in your lawn could be created towards the foundation of your home, the sprinklers get stuck, water comes in, there's not any coverage for that. So you have to be aware that you're properly, properly graded. Damage from freezing of pipes while the property is vacant or unoccupied. This is huge, and this probably affected some people in Texas a couple of weeks ago. Now, as long as the property has been winter, winterized, and that's what your property management company is going to do for you, they're going to winterize, excuse me, winterize that property. And that simply means draining uh, the pipes uh, and, then maybe, and then putting a little heat on so the place doesn't freeze on the inside while it's vacant. That's important to do. And in the event of these freezes coming through, you know they're coming. So you tap on your property management company, have them get to it right away if you have a vacant property. Because the damage uh, on a vacant property 
there's no waiting time on that. It's day one of waiting, excuse me, day one of vacancy. If, you, if your property freezes and your pipes burst inside the home, there's no coverage unless the property is winterized. Very important to remember. And we'll remind you one more time. Backup of sewers and drains is a situation where water backs up away from the footprint of the foundation and comes back into your home and causes damage inside the home. Typically, these come through the sewer lines. And um, this is um, something that can cause a lot of inconvenience. How this coverage is covered varies by states, um, but this is a coverage you can pick up. And um, rather relatively recently, actually, has been made available in a lot of our states. Our safe going and uh, travelers programs have opened that up to us. So that is available to you as a buyback. Otherwise, it is excluded. Other exclusions like mold and uh, pollution, uh, they'll have some limited coverage available to you on that, but um, massive mold claims, you have to buy mold coverage separately for those. Foundations can settle sometimes, particularly new new build or not even new build, just foundations settle. They just do, earth moves, and there's no coverage for that because it's, it's kind of un, uh, uninsurable. Damage to unattached buildings. If a business is operating from it, most of the properties, 99.9% .9 of the properties you all are buying have an attached garage. So this exclusion will not come into play. But if you buy an older property with a detached garage and you let the guy open up a, a garage inside your garage and to make some extra money, um, and if he burns that building down, there's absolutely no coverage. So be aware of that. Dog bites. Insurance companies, uh, and this is kind of, I've kind of threw this into the, into the property side. It's more of a liability claim, but we want you to see it. Insurance companies vary uh, on how they will address dog bites, breed exclusions, uh, or they might go through municipal codes. They might say what we consider to be a vicious dog breed, which is wide open. It depends on the municipality. That's where your property manager can help you figure that thing out. A uh, safe thing to do is to get small, fluffy dogs for your tenants and, then, and let them enjoy their small fluffy dogs. If the small fluffy dog bites somebody, no problem. Damage by pest, if it, you know, so we're not gonna pay for your termite work. Theft of anything not permanently installed. This is, you're, you're a landlord. If, um, so, excuse me, if, uh, if someone takes something that's not permanently installed and, and leaves with it, there's no coverage for that. Um, and it's just kind of the way that that works. And, and, and planning, zoning, municipal violations, maintenance, a good example of this is if you have uh, a, a, a patio cover put over the back of your property and you didn't get it approved. So it's basically a bootleg uh, patio cover and it falls and just collapses. We had that happen about three years ago. Very rare, but and, and it's not terribly expensive as long as nobody's sitting underneath it. And um, so in this case, nobody was sitting underneath it, it fell overnight. And it costs a gentleman about $2,000 to put up the new patio according to code. Um, that's an important issue. Wear and tear is all about property management, selecting your tenants. And at a certain point, the best of tenants are going to cause wear and tear to the property, particularly if you've been there a while. It just happens. So we're not going to repaint your house for you. That uh, is something that you have to do. That's part of the business of being a landlord. Here's a fun exclusion in a way if you want to look at that. If somebody decides to turn the inside of your property into a very humid atmosphere and grow plants, and they have, plants happen to be illegal, um, and if they cause damage to your home, like maybe move a couple of walls and do all kinds of fun things to your property, there is not going to be any coverage for that, for putting those walls back. These are getting to be pretty standard exclusions. The second item would be as if, well, reading, reading through the English here, if someone opens up a meth lab and blows your property up, you're gonna have a hard time getting coverage uh, to come to play on that. So have your, uh, that's why your property manager does routine um, um, inspections and that's why you never, never, ever, and your property manager will never, ever accept a year's worth upfront of rent payments. That's usually a clear signal that that's coming. Uh, in fact, more hints on it, tenant, Will not open the doors for you. You accept your cash in advance. Gotta have a professional property management. And what Sherry said is absolutely correct. The people with the worst experiences that we've run across, the leases respects their insurance situations, are people that self-manage their properties. 
There are exceptions, but by and large, that's going to make for a very unhappy experience. So how do we establish a replacement cost? Just real quick, I want you guys to know, we just don't throw it up in the air and say, okay, we're going to take 10% off of the market value and we'll call that replacement cost. We actually go in and look at several sites to get to get a general idea of, because of, sometimes they're not the same information. Uh, we'll see variances of three, 500 square feet on properties. Uh, so we want to make sure we've got them all down and we run through a, a software system to come up with a replacement cost. So when you ask, your, edge, your agents, if it's us or anybody else, how do they come up with a value? They didn't tell you, if they tell you they did not run this through a replacement cost system, but they said, oh, it's gonna be X dollars a foot, run from that agent. So, li landlord liability insurance. This, like I said, is the other half of the landlord coverage. This protection, like we said earlier, is in the event someone's injured on your rental property premises. Insurance company, this is again where they give it and we're going to take it away. Insurance companies will defend and pay claims from bodily injury or property damage to others arising from your property, unless it's otherwise excluded. Three important words. Um, but this is important getting to the defense because defense is in addition to your limits of coverage. So if you have a half million dollars of coverage, you also have that amount, whatever it costs to defend you, in our policies anyway, over and above the amount of liability insurance you, you have on the policy, which can be exceedingly important because defense can get very expensive. And you have a liability when you're responsible for an outcome, especially if it's codified by law. And again, we, we mentioned the trip and fall of sprinklers, wrongful eviction. If you're convicted of those things, then this is what your policy is for and then also there to defend you. Exclusions. These are fun. Uh, but then I'm an insurance person and I live and breathe this stuff. So I think it's fun because it's interesting. Everything is a little different. Each and every person has a different situation. There's no, there, there's a ton of similarities, very few um, identical situations. Anyway, obvious, obvious um, exclusion is an expected or an intended injury. If if you get mad at your tenant and you drive out to their home and you heave an, a, a frozen bottle of water at them, hit them upside the head and injure that person, your insurance company is gonna tell you to get your own, your own attorney because they're not going to defend you and they're not going to pay for that claim. Um, if The only exception to that would be is if you were defending yourself, but uh, we actually have had a claim like that it was involving uh, some drivers, not a property situation where a guy got mad chased down the driver and, and belted him with a frozen bottle of water. And we did not do anything for him. He's on his own. Resulting from violation of laws and ordinances that you, you commit or someone commits on your behalf. That's kind of a loose comment uh, on, on, on the uh, on exclusions. I don't like loose comments, but how do you get a, 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 around these situations? You have professional property management. If you try to self-manage a property in Texas from California or from New York, or even from Missouri, if you're that close, you are cruising for a bruising. You're going to have issues. That's another great reason for having Marshall Reddick and having professional property management. It is, it is a lifesaver for so many people. Arising out of business pursuits. Remember, we talked about the uh, just quickly on the property side. Uh, this is it's a business pursuit. A good example um, of a business pursuit would be as if you are. If you have a rental property and you decide to change it over to a daycare center and you keep your policy in place as though it's a landlord policy because you know you have a different entity in there it may be your entity but it's a different entity and this happens people will do this with single family homes and they leave the same landlord style dwelling fire policy in place there's absolutely no absolutely no general liability coverage on that policy for somebody getting injured on the premises so you don't want to do anything like that. Uh, rendering or failing to render professional service, well, that probably isn't going to come into play for you, uh, but uh, these are not professional liability policies. Uh, that's more of, again, your professional property management. On these individual policies, uh, non-business forms, they are single location policies. So you, unless the property is, is scheduled on, on your insurance policy, it's not covered. You might, have, you might have four addresses because it's a fourplex on one policy, perfectly fine. But um, 
if you have a, a, a property cross town, you can't let your property on the other side of town cover your property cross town. It's not going to work. Punitive damages. This is this varies state to state to state. California insurance companies do not pay punitive damages. Punitive damage. Um, oh, I can only think of an auto situation. I can't think of a punitive. Well, I can think of a punitive damage, but with professional property management, you won't have any. Um, but on an auto situation, if you're drunk and you you blast somebody, you T-bone them in an intersection and cause them injury, they're not only going to sue you for damage for damages to their car, damage to their person, they're going to sue you for punitive damages. The idea is to punish you. That's that's where you get big awards. Those are typically punitive damages, and in California, they don't pay them. In some states, they will pay them. So it's a state to state issue, but uh, for all intents and purposes, consider them not covered. Other exclusions, your share of a loss assessment, you can cover that under an HO loss assessment coverage endorsement on your landlord policy. And those are typically available, even on, we think of that always as a condominium coverage, because if you have a severe claim, the condo association will assess you for their lack of insurance or not having enough insurance. And they'll assess you by whatever way they've set up, if it's square footage, if it's if it's how much stock you have, if it's just the number of units divided by 100, if there's 100 units, they have a way in their CCNRs, and you're responsible for that when they assess you for damages for which their insurance was insufficient. Uh, this also happens on single family homes. Uh, if you're And more and more, when you're in the HOA in a single family home, same thing can happen. They are generally liability claims, which is why we put this in the liability section uh, of the exclusions. Um, but this is something you have to be aware of. And typically, just $15,000 of loss assessment coverage is like $11, $12. It's very inexpensive. You ought to buy it. Uh, of course, we're not going to cover under the liability section of the policy damage to your owned property. That's what the fire insurance is for. We're not going to cover injury to anybody who's eligible to receive workers' compensation insurance. When you self-manage, and we've had claims like this occur, people have, have gone out and obtained uh, bids from people and one bid is radically lower and they take it. Well, there's a reason that, that bid was radically lower. They don't have insurance uh, and they don't have a lot of other things. They may not even have a valid license. They may be operating under someone else's license. Um, in most states, uh, if they're eligible to receive workers' compensation, they are, your insurance company is not going to pay this under the liability section if there's no liability, excuse me, if there's no workers' compensation available. I will tell you, we have had a situation where the company actually paid the claim, but um, it was an unusual situation. If you hire anybody to come on your premises, make sure that they have liability insurance and workers' compensation insurance if they have employees, and that's what your property manager will do for you. This in and of itself is a reason to have property management, and Marsh Reg is the best. And the other ones you can see, they're pretty obvious exclusions. We have some insider tips we want to share with you. They're really kind of interesting. And there's going to be some repetition, but we want to hit some items for you that are very, very important for you to understand. The vacancy clauses, these are in most of your policies. There are some forms out there. They're business forms. They're made by specialty outlets that don't have a vacancy clause, but they also don't have the extended uh, replacement cost. And some of them don't have, some of them do have, but many of them don't have the building code upgrade coverages. Some of them don't have, some of them do have loss or rental income. Um, unlike ours, they have all that automatically. But what you see here is typical of most of your policies you will, you will purchase as a, land, as a landlord. If your property is unoccupied for 60 consecutive days of vacancy, preceding a claim, preceding a lot, insurable loss, coverage is suspended, for that claim, including vandalism, glass breakage, theft or attempted theft, and burglary. Uh, when your property's vacant, it's a high risk to having your air conditioner stolen uh, or the parts inside to get the copper. Maybe you've had situations where people have gone inside homes and stolen the, cop the copper out of the walls. You can imagine the damage. And then the biggie, fire insurance will be suspended. Now, this exclusion does not trigger uh, excuse me, the, the countdown is not triggered until you're finished making your cosmetic repairs. If you buy a brand new property 
when you take it over, it's ready to go. But if you're in between tenants, you're going to have a couple of weeks where you might have to clean up the floors. You're going to have to clean up the carpets or you may have to re, uh, reseal the tile. Whatever you have in there on the wood floors, wherever it might be, you might have to repaint. Once you've done that, that's when your countdown happens. We have it happen occasionally. We had one happen recently, but it was in the area where they had bad weather and it, and it created a problem um, to get a tenant in there. But uh, in the vast majority of cases, and this is again where property management is great, uh, they are completely incentivized to get somebody in there as fast as possible. And so they will. Um, and my experience has been anywhere from nine days to 21 days at most to get a tenant into my properties. That was in the Clarksville area. The um, so if, if you don't do if you don't have if you don't have a professional property manager, you're not going to get to it as quickly. It's just human nature, and that's where we see these situations occurring. So remember that 60 days, 60 consecutive days, you have an issue. Remember we mentioned burst frozen pipes. Pipes, and again, this is they are damage resulting from a burst frozen pipe is not covered. In the first day of vacancy. Again, your property manager's got to winterize the property. And um, some vacancy clauses with some insurance companies, ours with Safeco and Travelers are pretty consistent on what we'd mentioned to you about the 60 days. Some jurisdictions and some insurance contracts will avoid coverage entirely, and they might just do 30 days. How do you get away, how do you get away from this really awful exclusion if you have a cold weather property? You stay in touch with your insurance agent like our customer did recently, and we put a policy in place that will handle vacancy situations. We're on a per diem basis, costs a little bit more, but we get through it pretty quickly. And then you stay in touch with your property manager and your property manager stays in touch with you. It's very simple. Good property managers will not allow that to happen. And then one rise the property. Uh, this is an equity killer in your property. Actually, we mentioned it a little earlier, extra cash value. Um, this is if you look at this very quickly, this is this is an example of actual cash value. If you have an actual cash value policy and you have a house that's 30, 40 years of age and you have fire inside the home, you have a kitchen fire, some guy tries to do wok cooking, those are typical, those are really great fire, kitchen fire claims. You your hundred thousand dollar claim is going to get reduced on a 40 year, 40 year old home, probably can reduce thirty thousand dollars, somewhere in that range, give or take ten thousand. Uh, if you have a replacement cost policy with all the right coverage that we talked about, the building code coverages, and if necessary, the extended replacement values, your hundred will pay the full hundred thousand dollar claim. So replacement cost is what you want. I don't like cash to cash value claims. Nobody's happy with the outcome. This is something we want you to understand, and you'll see you'll see our agency typically do the little higher deductibles than most. Because these are the pain points. These are where we see where the where the uh, no one likes a high deductible on here, but it will substantially reduce the cost of your insurance. And over a period of five years, you're going to catch up, and from that point, you're ahead in the vast majority of cases. And so you can have one claim every ten years, and you are so far ahead, even with this five thousand dollar deductible. It's it's something that you want to do. Typically, deductibles will try to keep them at 1% on the wind and hail because the larger homes, like a $500,000 home, that's going to be a $5,000 deductible. Or to save money, if you have a lot of properties, you might want to flip to 2% deductible for wind and hail. If you have enough properties, you do it on all of them, it will make sense to you. Where you buy, and, and the Reddick people have this zeroed in, is where you want to buy property. Coastal areas, they don't get on the coast. Uh, California is a different situation, but set, uh, south, the Gulf Coast, um, the eastern seaboard, they don't get on the coast with, this, with the exception of, of Florida, but Florida's got this down pretty good. So you're, you're in good shape on a price, stand, price basis. And, and the properties they sell on the Gulf are on the inside, the Gulf where you get regular rates in most cases. Um, in fact, their rates are very, very, very good. They're like California rates. They're very good. Uh, but if you get into AL, into areas like uh, Houston, you're going to pay a ton if you are on the on the seaward side of Houston itself. Harris County is a very expensive uh, area. Same with the Gulf Coast uh, on uh, the Carolinas, not the Gulf Coast, but the Carolinas. 
in Georgia on those on those sides, they can get expensive. Lower rates is right where the ready people have zeroed in. Austin, Clarksville, and Oak Grove, Arizona, California, except for the brush zones, and we hate them here. And insurance companies hate them too and price accordingly, by the way. Indianapolis, you might not think of that as a relatively mild climate, but other than an occasional storm or two, they're gonna have they're going to have snow and stuff, but it's relatively mild, as is Boise. Boise is a great place as well. And of course, Florida, Sunshine State, how can you lose? You can typically get your better rates all around. There we go, it's there somewhere. Uh, along with what you buy affecting your cost of insurance, the newer the property, the lower the insurance cost. Uh, you get every discount in the books with, uh, with the newer property. Roofs, if you're buying a property and it's a little older, put a new roof on there or, or make sure that you're buying a property with not a super old roof. If you buy a property with you know, 20 years plus on a roof, uh, you're gonna lose money on the premium. It's gonna cost you more, makes you a little bit less competitive with other people renting properties in your area. And roofs, uh, typically less than three and some countries less than five years of age will receive an additional discount. It's very, very important. And your older roofs may get depreciated. If you have a, a bad wind loss to a roof that's 25 years of age, you might end up getting maybe 20 cents on the dollar on it, on the, re, on the repair. We like the three to four bedroom homes, two and a half baths, up to 2,800 square feet. Awesome. You don't want to buy a pool, a house with a pool in it. They're wonderful and they look great on the advertisements, but you are so liable for everything that's going to happen. We highly recommend you don't do that. Uh, and then uh, you don't want a, a property with a claims history. Again, newer property is not an issue. If you have an older home, when we quote, we will typically run a, what we call a clue report. And if we see a property that's had a ton of claims, uh, depending on what they are, um, they might be a property you might not want to buy. Uh, and you can discuss that with your with your property with your property uh, your real estate agent. Excuse me. Many of these times, though, these claims, another company has has paid for all the repairs that needed to be done, so it could be a great property. So it will vary on the situation, but um, the optimum situation is a property that's had very few claims to it. Personal aspects of insurance uh, will affect how your rates are developed. In most states, um, except for California, and then Washington State is coming along trying to change that, excuse me, trying to change that. They, they run what's called an insurance score. An insurance score is is a score based upon claims activities of, of you individually in some states or for landlord properties, really of that particular property. And in many cases, it won't even, won't even affect the property that you're buying. Again, it depends upon the state. But California, you're not used to that. You buy a property, if, uh, if, if you have a great uh, history of, of no claims in California, and, and John sitting next to you has lousy history, and you want to buy the same property, all things being equal, the premium is going to be the same. You do that in Texas, there could be a swing of 50% in the premium. It's huge. So you want to be aware of that. We'd like to see you pay uh, your premium in full, however we want you to do it through the property, through your mortgage company. Mortgage company will pay it monthly, you because that's, excuse me, you'll pay it monthly to the mortgage company, mortgage company pays it in full and you get the premium in full discount. It's kind of cool. Um, with our programs, a lot, a lot of insurance companies don't like you to have more than you know six to eight properties, in some cases 10. We can write for an individual up to 20 properties in our Safeco program without asking. We can go to 25 by simply making a phone call. So we have great flexibility for you. That's a, that's a selfish plug right there, by the way. Um, tenants dogs can be a problem. We, we hit the dog thing. Basically, just make sure of the insurance policy whether or, they, whether or not they have exclusions. Your property manager can help you with that. If you have a breed uh, for which you know the, the people buy it and you want them to have insurance, but they can't get insurance for that breed, there's companies called Fido out of Florida that will actually provide you with a policy specifically on a breed, specific breed. Your tenant can buy it. There's a lot of ways of getting this coverage, so don't ever let the tenant tell you they can't get coverage. The um, tenants can be tough as well. Um, you have 
Uh, they must buy their own renter's insurance if they want their own property and liability protected. You are not responsible. So if they do have that, that walk kitchen fire and they want you to pay for their renters, uh, right, rather for their cost of hotel while you're fixing your property and pay for the for the cleaning and the damages to to their to their living room furniture and things like that, you don't do that. You're not going to do that. Now there is a trend coming. It's not big yet for our endorsements for in some states you can pick up maybe ten thousand dollars of coverage for that. I don't think you should. It's the tenant's responsibility for their own liability protection and their own their own in renters policy where they can get renters in uh, loss of uh, use of their property, in other words, to pay for the hotel somewhere else. Now, they will not pay you rent. They're paying somebody else for a place to stay while you're repairing your property. But again, you have loss of rental income protection, so that will work for you. So in a way, you're kind of paying for it just by not charging them rent, but you are not responsible for their damage. Sometimes a tenant it will get evicted, and they're going to vandalize the property. How insurance companies will treat this will vary by... That's something you need to know. So um, it's not moving at the moment. Excuse me. There we go. Okay, I had to get rid of something covering my arrows. And we mentioned the rental income protection. I'm going to go buy this. We're getting to run short on time here, but just say, do understand you do have rental income in most of your policies that we provide, and most professional insurance policies will give you that protection. If that rent is not enough, call your insurance broker because it's cheap to increase the coverage. This is something we want you to know because this is the number one most common cause of unintended cancellation to your insurance policy. And a cancel policy is a really bad thing to have when you have a fire or a water damage claim to your property. And that number one cause is, is loans are sold. Or sometimes you will refi and the, and the lender does not ask for insurance. Uh, C CMG is excellent about this. The preferred credit lender, they're excellent about getting information. You're not going to have that situation with them. But we've run in situations where lenders have uh, done a refi and they simply, the loan people failed to, to notify the insurance agent. Or your loan was sold. We are not going to know. Everything should be done in the background. The, the, the company buying the loan should get the insurance information. But we get calls on this three, four, five times a week. Uh, where there's suddenly the policy's canceled because we build the old mortgage company. We didn't know about the new one. So you've got to let your insurance people know. Just take it upon yourself and let them know. Um, and if you move, if you change your, your personal address or your email, your phones, let us know because there are times we have to get a hold of you. And if we have to, we'll try to chase you down through Facebook, but it's difficult getting to you sometimes. When is a million dollars less than a half a million? If you buy a commercial form of landlord insurance, you get what they call an annual aggregate. A aggregate means is once they pay the million dollars, it's over. And some of those policies even include defense inside those limits. With our, with our other policies, if you have a half a million dollars coverage, these are occurrence policy, each occurrence during the policy year. So you can have two or three claims. I certainly hope you don't. But if you could have two or three claims on your property that could, that could go limits, We'd pay 150 plus, rather a million five hundred thousand plus defense. That's your difference. That's when half a million is worth more than a million. Crucial insider tips that we've already mentioned: strategically use your deductible. Do a comprehensive insurance review so that you know your vulnerabilities. Your policies are, are not the same. Um, you have to know what's in them. You have to know what's not covered. You have to know um, how much risk you can take so that you can handle a claim. And the most crucial part of your insurance program is your professional property management along with your insurance agent. They work together. And we do with the Reddick people, we do a great job. And so you have to have, I know this is the third time I've mentioned it, maybe even the fourth, but I just believe in that so very much. Real quickly, I wanna give you a quick rundown on condominiums. Condominiums are just like landlord policies, except they don't ensure the structure. But how we ensure the interior depends upon the CCNRs. Um, 
and there's no 125% coverage on your, on your interior structure of a condominium. So you have to have a pretty good idea of what's inside. Uh, the trend for, for, for most, insure, most condominiums is you insure the inside, what they call walls in, and that the HOA insures wall, the firewalls out. But you might run the one where, if it, particularly if it's more of a seasonal vacation style of a location, a destination, the HOA might cover the whole thing, or at least how it was originally built, and you only insure the interior improvements and upgrades. So you need to talk to the realtor and you need to talk to the HOA to make sure how you want to insure that properly. And of course, property management. Umbrella. This is a very, very important part, something that Marshall Reddick himself personally believed in. In fact, he believed in it so much, I used to have to wear the moniker Stan the, the Umbrella Man. I, I wore that, that moniker for a decade. And so I finally convinced Marshall, we don't want to do that anymore. But here's what an umbrella will do. It pays insurance claims in addition to your primary insurance policy for a home or landlord policy, and even over your car insurance if you buy the, the umbrella policy correctly. So if you have a half a million dollars of liability insurance on your landlord policy, if you buy and you buy this in increments of a million, you have a million plus this, this policy. However, there's some things you need to know about uh, umbrella policies. They do not extend the property side, the structure coverage. In fact, I have, I have people, I will have people during the year say, well, I have an umbrella policy, so if I don't have enough insurance, it'll just extend my dwelling coverage. And no, it does not. Uh, you have to be careful about that. Most umbrella policies, simple excess liability policies, basically extend the additional coverage. And be aware that some umbrella policies will not extend coverage to any additional insureds. If you have any additional insurance on your policy that are not family members uh, or resident relatives, even as far as that goes, your umbrella, your umbrella policy may not extend to them. So um, make sure that we have policies that can do that. They are out there. Make sure you buy a policy that will extend to any additional insurance that you have. It'll be the same price as just finding the policy. And a real umbrella excuse me, a real umbrella policy will extend and enhance your basic liability protection. One great example is if you use our, our Safeco pro program and you're, you're driving a car in Germany on the Autobahn, you run into somebody, your umbrella will cover you there for the liability. So you need to buy the property from the dealer, but you have liability coverage following you worldwide. Umbrella policies are really quite easy to put together. Again, they are excess over and above your other policies. And umbrella policies will typically require a minimum threshold policy limit of $300,000 or more on your primary policies. So you cannot drop an umbrella over a $15,000, $30,000 liability policy or else you have a gap that you have to insure until the umbrellas can come into play. But see how we stack them. It goes over your umbrella or vacation, over your cars, over your rental properties. That's kind of how an umbrella looks. But if you buy them in a total package, you will actually save money. Use our Safeco package. This is another um, latent um, self-aggrandizement here. Uh, we will discount everything. All policies will discount if they're purchased in a package. You might find us a little high or comparably priced in the auto. You might find our homeowners really great. You might find our proper, little properties pricing very good on one, not so good on the other. But if you package the whole thing together, you usually will find that our package will come in and be your best deal overall. You got to look at these as a global um, insurance purchase. So that is pretty much it. Uh, but I can hit real fast. With our Safeco program, we provide 24 7 live customer service. This is a dedicated line. You can call us on this line. They know that when you call this telephone number, that you are with us and with Marshall Reddick. This is a dedicated phone line. Um, they will quote new policies and issue them seven days a week for you. The service teams are live 24 7. 365 days a year. And I mentioned that we are live. We are extremely live. You can talk to somebody at night. Christmas Eve, I call them at 11 o'clock and wish them Merry Christmas. I feel sorry for them, but they're making overtime, so you're probably loving it. Um, Safeco will, and will even give you an online account. If you, if you like antiseptic insurance, you can do everything online in the way you want. Uh, Travelers has something similar, except they do, they do not quote policies for you. They can quote changes for you on their 24-7 live service center as well. 
uh, and they also have online presence for you to be antiseptic. And then of course, you have um, Huggins Directman Insurance. Why us? As we mentioned earlier, we research each property for insurance. We examine several sources to develop a proper limit of coverage. Our Safeco and Travelers programs are industry leaders. Safeco was part of Liberty Mutual. Together, they're the fourth largest domestic insurance group, maybe even the third now, I think. Travelers obviously is a mega company, and we bring it as a group. And we have our additional pro program features. You can keep pace with replacement costs. We protect your rental income. We actually send out inspectors on your properties. If we see things, we might let you know. If have something you need to know about, again, providing new roof discounts. Safeco, if you call them for a quote, they have our recommended protection profile. They know what we want you to have. And again, Safeco service teams are live 24 seven, all domestic. Traveler's insurance is open 365 days a week or a year if you prefer. And, but, uh, sorry about that. And they do not issue policies, but they're excellent service teams as well. We really do bring it for you. We bring you the best service system as well. And this is us again. This is the end of the, our presentation. This is where we talk about, this is how you get a hold of us. This is how we are. This is us, our brick and mortar lines. That's my extension. That's Michael's extension, our email addresses. You can find us at hdinsure.com and get a hold of us there. And Sherry, back to you. Thank you so much, Dan. Always so much great information. You are invaluable. Um, once again, thank you guys so much for being with us tonight. If you have any questions, you can reach out to Stan directly. You can reach out to me. I can get a hold of him for you. This last slide will be my contact information. If you want, take a, a snapshot of it with your phone. I'll reach out with any questions you might have. I can, once again, put you in touch with Stan. I can sit down and we can talk about um, any kind of investment property you would like to uh, hear a little bit about, we can do a consultation. Um, love to hear from you guys, and I hope everybody has a wonderful evening, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Thank you very much. Appreciate, appreciate the attendance.